Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. I believe that before the night is over, somebody is leaving here with a breakthrough. Somebody's going to leave you with a breakthrough in your heart, a breakthrough in your mind, a breakthrough in your finances, a breakthrough in your family. I need about 50 people to shout Name of 
the Jesus. Every attack that's coming against the people of God, we decree and declare there is a breakthrough today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, you are the God of the break. You are the God of my break. You run to him when you don't know what to do. Mm. Yes. You are the God. You are the God of the breaking in his heart. Breakthrough in my mind. Breakthrough in my spirit. Breakthrough in my soul. Breakthrough in my weakness. Breakthrough in my strength. You are the God. You are the God. Breakthrough in Break through when I praise, break through when I lift, break through when I fire your name, break through when I dance, break through when I shout. You are the God. Thank you for joining us, Donna. Oh, let's sing that song. Break through. Type it on the screen for me. Break through in the name of Jesus. Break through, break through. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough when I lift and glorify your name, breakthrough when I breakthrough. Hey, you are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my son. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We praise you. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. Breakthrough in my praise. As we praise the Lord, you're going to get that breakthrough. Do not listen to the voice of the enemy that it's over. Do not listen to the voice that said it's hopeless. Praise me. I'm going to bring that breakthrough. Yes, breakthrough. Breakthrough. The God, you are the God of the breakthrough. When I praise, yes, you are the God. Thank you, sister. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Hey, in my home, in my marriage, in my family. Hallelujah. There has to be a breakthrough because God has spoken. Breakthrough. Every day there is a breakthrough. Fridays, yes. You are the God. You are the God of my breakthrough. In my home, in my marriage, in my spirit, yes. Breakthrough. You are the God of my breakthrough. Ooh. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You are the God. You are the God of my breakthrough. Breakthrough. Sing it. Breakthrough. 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 You are the God. You are the God of my breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is the God of a breakthrough. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. We thank you, God, because you are our strength and power. You've made our way perfect. And we speak today, we say breakthrough in our homes, breakthrough in our marriages, breakthrough in our minds, breakthrough in our spirits, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for those marriages today that the enemy has been attacking. We serve you. Notice. You would no more mess with the marriages of people of God. In the name of Jesus, all your works and all your plans are utterly destroyed because the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars and as God spoke and broke those cedar trees right now, every stronghold, every heavy curse, Every every attack that is coming against the marriages of God's people is utterly destroyed. God has spoken and it is broken in the name of Jesus. 
we do not ask you to back off we do not beg you but we speak to you in the power and in the authority of the most high god we command you to cease in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every stronghold every plan against this husband and wife every plan against this family to separate the wife from the husband or to separate the break of this family separating them from the father and mother from their children the spirit of division I command you to cease now I command you to cease I command you to cease in the name of Jesus your stronghold is broken your stronghold is broken the stronghold of division the stronghold of strife the stronghold of separation is broken in the name of Jesus we call it that we release the power and the anointing of God upon the lives of God's children upon these marriages we call them blessed in the name of Jesus they would not believe the lie of the enemy no more would they believe the lie of the enemy we call you free we call you free we call you free in Jesus name and we give you the praise we give you the praise we say thank you father thank you father in Jesus name hallelujah good morning everyone thank you for joining us Sharon thank you all Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. We worship you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. And as we, I just played the song by Eddie James, wonderful man of God. I shared with you many times this man, God has been using him to make an impact in the lives of young people. Many young people in the street that were strong in drugs, that were in gangs, he's taking them in as, and, and introduced them to the Lord. Their lives are turned around and they're with him going all over the world and ministering to others. And so I would encourage you, invest in this ministry. It's called Eddie James. You could go online. Let's sow it into this ministry. These are children. Many times as believers, we pray for our children. Lord, bring them home. Lord, take them off the streets. Here is a man who's helping these children. And even as we pray, let's put our hands in our pockets and bless, go online and sow. This is a powerful ministry. Lives are being transformed every day. Some of these individuals, they have no family. Eddie James is their family. He takes care of them. They have all kinds of expenses. He takes care of them. So let us as brothers and sisters join with our brother as he rescue those that the enemy had in his hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Lord, I pray this word will go forth to your children. I will say only what you would have me to say, Father. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. As some of you may know, for the for this month of August, today is the last day, but for the month of August, we've been talking about families. We're appreciating, we're appreciating, we're celebrating families. I started off by talking about our grandparents, great-grandparents and parents. And um, last week and this week, I've been talking about children. And yesterday, I said um, that was the end. I've completed. And even as I said that in my spirit, I felt that there was something else the Lord needed me to share about families. And so even as I came off, I... One minute, please. Let me take this off. This fan is making some noise. Excuse me. Thank you, the fan in the background was making some noise. So, as I came off yesterday, it was just, I'm just, I just kept hearing, attack, attack. Families are under attack. Families are under attack, husband and wives. Specifically, I heard that husband and wives, and I said, Lord, what would you have me to share tomorrow? Which is today, that's what I said yesterday. And so, God, just as I was praying yesterday, and I was in the word, God started revealing some things to me to pray about and to talk about today. And I'll share that with you in a minute. But let's do our confession today for our children. It's taken from 2 Corinthians 5, 21b. It says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Again, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And what that means, Jesus bore all of our sins on the cross. Jesus came and he stand, good morning Lydia, thank you for joining us. Jesus came and he stand as the medi mediator in between, the go-between person. We remember way back when Adam and Eve sinned, that separated man from God when God drove them out of the garden. And so Jesus came 
to bring back man to God so that they could have that union once again. They could have that communion. They could have that fellowship, good fellowship. And so because of Jesus dying on the cross, he took care of our sins. So when we accept them into our hearts, we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So that's as long as you're a child of God. Yes, you may be messing up, you'll be making a mistake, but always remember, because the enemy, the Bible says, he's an accuser of the brethren. He comes to, you may make a mistake and the enemy may want to beat upon you. You're this, you're no good because you did this. And he makes you feel that God would not forgive you. But whenever that tormenting force wants to come on you, wants to, whenever you hear that force and it wants to torment you, wants to condemn you, you just say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus took the stripes in his back. Jesus bore it on Calvary. He died for my sins. I have repented of my sins. They or I would not live in guilt. I would not live feeling convicted because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The confession for us today, adults, is taken from uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, and also from Ephesians 6, 11. It says, the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. I will put on the full armor of God so that I can stand against the devil's schemes. We should not be ignorant, brothers and sisters, but we should be aware. Regardless of how young a Christian you are or how old you've been with the Lord, the devil, the devil, the Bible says, the devil prowls, prowls, prowls around. You know, like you spit someone the thief, they prowls around, they try to look to find a way to get into your home or to get into your car, to steal whatever. The devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Let's ask ourselves, am I in the place where the devil could bring things in my way to devour, to try to devour me, to devour things in my life? Am I, am I guarded? Am I in the place where I could stand against what the enemy has planned for me? So the confession is, I know that the devil, the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. That's found in 1 Peter 5, 8. But I will put on the full armor of God so that I can stand against the devil's scheme. We have to be equipped. Good morning, Marcia. Thank you for joining us. We have to be ready. Put on the armor of God. What is the armor of God? The word. That's why it's important for us to spend time in the word. Confessing the word. Make sure we have those times with the presence the be I call it Bible devotion times. You read the word, you pray, and then you wait quietly in his presence to hear what God would have to say. And even as you read and pray, you even have times where you just praise him, it's times of praise and worship. So our confession, we're not walking in fear. We're not walking as people who don't know what's going on. We are aware. We know what the enemy tactics are. So let's be alert. He prowls around looking for someone to devour. Therefore, I will put on the full armor of God so that I can stand against the devil's schemes. Hallelujah. So marriages are under attack. As I got off yesterday, I kept hearing that in my spirit and I kept hearing subtle, subtle. The enemy, the devil has attacked marriages, husbands and wives in a very subtle way. A very subtle way, cunning way. It comes on as though it's, it's, it, it, it appears to you at first that it's just simple. It appears to you at first that there is no arm, but in, he does that in a way so that you would listen to his voice and you would start doing what he says to do. For instance, and this is what the Lord showed me, they said there are many marriages. Uh, there may be a misunderstanding and there are no perfect marriages. We all are growing and they will be misunderstanding. If someone says to you, we never argue, mm -mm, don't believe them. There is, I mean, they may come to a point where they don't, but they, in every marriage, there would be a point where there was some misunderstanding because we're human beings. And so when there is that misunderstanding, what do we do? What's our reaction? And so as I was Throughout the day, the Lord just kept bringing the word to me, subtle, subtle, be alert, be alert. He's going to come in subtle ways. And this is one of the things he shared with me. He said, there may be a husband and wife that's going through situations. And either one of them, either the husband or the wife, decides to share it with someone. And he said, many times, some we share it with people sometimes who do not even know the Lord. Now I'm, I'm addressing those who claim to know the Lord. We share it with someone. And that individual may say to you, I kept hearing this, oh, 
you got to think about you. At the end of the day, it's about your happiness, girl. And you got to think about you. You working hard and you, if you don't think about you, nobody will think about you. I would advise you to leave that man or I would advise you to leave that woman. And so there is the enemy. And so it comes in subtle ways is that this person would make you feel, well, you are entitled to happiness. You are entitled to, to live a life that you could enjoy. And you don't go through no life with no man pressuring you, with you, no woman pressuring you. You got to look out for yourself. I would leave that man. I would leave that woman. And so they show you all the reasons why you should leave. And God is saying, my daughter, my son, be careful. All those reasons that someone lists may seem well, she's right. This is happening. That is happening. It makes sense what she says. But before you decide to just walk out in that marriage, come to me. Think what I'm doing. Would Jesus be pleased with this? And many times you said we look at we look at the movies or we look at all these sitcoms or soaps or whatever. And we want to pattern our lives and we see where each whether the wife is standing up for herself and she is telling the husband off and, and she is like i got this i got my life to live and you're not holding me back or the husband would tell the wife likewise and so often we pattern ourselves from what we see and what we hear and god is saying be cautious subtle subtle the enemy comes in he even went on to say um many times Absolutely, Lydia said we should always ask what would Jesus do. Many times, there are people, in, and I kept hearing him saying, there are people who, who prayed and said they had all these plans. They wanted children and they, they want children and have blessed them with children. But when the, when the hard times come or situations arise in their lives, it's about me. I got to take care of me. I need to, I, I'm not happy and I cannot continue living this way. I have to, th I have to do things that makes me happy. It's about me. I have to take care of me. And those same individuals that have prayed and asked me for the children or that child, at this time, they forget all about the child. They forget about the child that they prayed and asked me for or the children that I've blessed them with. And they decide to walk out from that marriage or they decide to file for a divorce, not thinking about that child. And you have, as I was taking communion yesterday, I was in prayer and I was taking communion. And as I was taking communion, I remember the verse. I just, the Lord just started, I just pictured Jesus when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. Before he went to the cross to die for us, before we went there, he was there. And he saw, he felt the weight of the world upon him. He saw what he was about to do. Now we know, as I said, God made man. We were in communion with God. We were in fellowship. Adam and Eve, every day, God came down and met with them. They had that time of fellowship. But they sinned, and that drifted them, that separated them from God. There was no more that fellowship. And God said, I, I, want, I want to be back with man. I, I want to enjoy that sweet fellowship again. And so I'm going to do something. I'm going to send my son, my only son, so he could be the mediator. He could be the go-between. He could be there to redeem them back to me, to bring them back to me. And so his only son, he chose. And so here is Jesus about to do what his father asked him to do. He was about, I want you to listen to this carefully. As I was taking communion, I saw Jesus there in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's like I saw him on his knees. And he was about to go to the cross. He saw the weight. He felt the weight of the sins of the world. Mind you, he was going to die for a people who he did not know. They were in, we were in no way in relationship. To, we were in no way related to him. And Jesus, yes, he was the son of God, but he was also human. And he said, Father... Because he saw the pain. It was painful. He knew it was going to be painful for him to go and die on the cross. Father, if it be possible, remove this cup from me. And the cup he was referring to was dying on the cross. Remove this cup from me, Father. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, God, but your will be done. He said, Father, 
It's painful. I really don't want to go to the cross. Can you remove it from me? But God, not what I desire. Not my will. But your will be done. Hallelujah. Mm. And as I saw this and I'm hearing it in my spirit, the Lord said, Jesus, he is foremost uh, the thing that he wanted to do most, the thing foremost in his mind was to obey and to do the will of God. And he said, you know what? Many times we go through situations in marriages, husbands and wives, and again, we think about me. I want my happiness. Many people enter into marriages, and especially, I'm going to stop here and say, especially if you are a woman and man of God, and you know that you sought God for your spouse, and you know God said this man is supposed to be your husband, or this woman is supposed to be your husband. You know that. You told people, God said she's my wife. God said he's my husband. And now the hard times are coming. There is some misunderstanding. Something is going on, and you are ready to throw in the towel. Now we start, the Lord gave me this comparison. I said, wow. So Jesus said, if it be possible, let it be copy removed from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so he went to the cross. Now in him going there, he, Jesus did not just, it did just not happen easily. Let's look at the steps. He was placed on, he was placed on the cross. First of all, they put a, crown of thorns on his head picture this if we get pricked by a little rose bush from the little thing we would cry ouch because it hurts just a little prick now now, now just think about it they took thorns the bush the rose bush all those things and they took these thorns they wrapped it around in the form of a crown and they pressed it on his head now you tell me if that wasn't pain tell me if that wasn't painful so they pressed it on his head and the blood began to drip and then they put him on the cross and they put the nails in his hands oh jesus and the blood began to drip and they put the nails in his feet i want you to get this so in the process of him bringing us back into fellowship with god in order for us to bring us back into the relationship that we once had with god he had to go through pain. Pain for a people he knew not. Pain for a people who were not related to him. Pain for a people who were not his blood relatives. Jesus did that because he wanted us to come back in fellowship with God. And the Lord said to me yesterday as I was about to take the communion. He said, many of you are saying, it's about me. I got a life. I need to be happy. I'm not happy. So I'm going to walk out in this marriage. I need a divorce. And God is saying, what are you willing to do to bring that marriage to the place where it needs to be? What are you willing to do to bring that man and marriage back into fellowship again? Jesus, my son, was willing to go through the pain. And he's saying, the, little, the, the situations that you're going through in your marriage is nothing to be compared with what Jesus did. The thorns, the, the crown of, that was made from thorns that was pressed on his head. Jesus, help us to see what you're trying to show us today. And the blood was running down on his face and they pressed it. And not only was the pain coming from those thorns, the crown in his head, there was the mockery and the laughter and the jeering, all of that physical and, and, and emotional and mental pain. And it didn't stop there. The nails in his hands, the nails in his feet. Let's ask ourselves, have I ever went through such pain, the pain that Jesus went through? Jesus did it because he wanted us to come back into fellowship with God. Just think for one moment. If Jesus had said, well, I don't feel like doing this. God, I know what to do. It. I, don't, I don't want to do it. I'm just saying, let's just think. Where would we have been today? Where would we have been today? So the Lord is saying, parents, wives, husband and wives, be careful. Yes, you want to be happy. Is it all about you? You want to walk out to the marriage because of something that happened. It's not all going to be a bed of roses. It's not all going to be the way we want, we all want. And God wants you to be happy. But are you willing to make that sacrifice for your children? 
the enemy it's the plan of the enemy the Lord is saying he is after our marriages because you know when the father and the mother splits up then I could get that child's mind that child would not be able to focus in school that child would start having nightmares you see everything God has set up that family God has set up that family and the devil is against family because that's that that's that's who God is we have God the Father Son and Holy Spirit it's a representation of who God is and the enemy comes in subtle ways wanting us to think well it's important for you to be happy you cannot be going through depression but you cannot be going through that so my brother my sister if there's something going on and it is driving you to the place of depression let's get into the word let's get into the word this is our strength this is our source get into the word get someone call ask God give me someone that could be my prayer buddy that could help pray me through this situation but God is saying he wants us to look at this comparison Jesus went to the cross it was not easy he was in pain and no way are we ever going to experience the pain that Jesus went through he did it for us with no relations to us no blood ties no no brother no sister none of that how much more us let's stop thinking about ourselves I'm not saying if you are in an abusive relationship where a man or a woman is hitting on you, you use wisdom. You may have to walk out for a while, remove from that home, suggest to your spouse you get counseling. You may remove from that home, but, the, but I'm saying the first thing should not be, I want a divorce. You remove from that home, not stay in an abusive relationship. But I'm talking to others who are not being in an abusive relationship. Maybe something the husband said that you didn't like, something he did that hurt you so badly. That you say, I can never forgive that man. But God is saying, what are you willing to give up for your children? It's not all about you. Our children didn't ask for you to bring them in the world. They didn't ask for us to bring them. They are here. We did what we did what it takes to have a child. We all had the fun and the children came. And some of you may say, well, we didn't plant. It was an accident. As they said back in my country, you cannot go to crap. To, you cannot go to, what they say, crab dance and come away without mud well the crabs live in the mud if you go to the crab dance you're gonna come away without mud with mud on your skin if you are married and you know you have sexual intercourse it's a possibility that a baby would come and so do not say well I didn't ask I didn't plan for her I didn't plan for him that child that gift is a blessing from God and whatever is going on in your family God is saying look at me my son went through pain so that you could be so that you could be back in fellowship with me your marriage may be broken they may seem no hope do not say that's it are you willing come to the place come to me you might say god you don't know what this man put me through what this woman put me through just remember jesus said father if it be possible let this cup be removed from me nevertheless not my will but your will be done god it is hard god you know what this man been doing to me you know the things that he said to me you know the stuff that he told my friends that are not true god you know what this woman did to me she cheated on me she lied she stole my money but god i want to get up but if it be possible not my will god you have blessed us with children. I do not want the choices that I make to affect my children negatively. I do not want the choices that I make would open the door for the enemy to come and, and mess with the minds of my children. They would not be able to learn. They would not be able to focus. God, I need your help. God, I need your help. Let's come to God. Let's come to God and ask him for help. And I tell you, God is very concerned because even as the Lord spoke to me yesterday, I could feel the heart of God. I could feel God is grieved because he said, many of us are allowing these simple things, things that the enemy in a subtle way has come into our family to break up our marriages, to break up the relationship with fathers and children and mothers with children. And so he's saying, he wants us to think, if you are about to get that divorce, you're gonna file that papers today come to me Lord is this what I need to do and yes there are some cases where one spouse may want to change and the other doesn't want to change you go to God with that but he's saying do not let the first thing you think about is leaving or separating or divorce 
think about the children that are involved. Yes, you have a life. And many people out there who are, you know, have the DAs and the masters will say, you got to think about you. You got to get out of this marriage. He's not treating you right. You deserve to be treated right. You deserve. Yes, we deserve to be treated right. How many times have we messed up in God's sight? How many times have we failed God? Does he kick us to the curb? And you may say, I'm not God. I'm a human being. But God has given us the strength. I just hope that you get the picture of what God is trying to say today. The enemy. And I'm going to read the verse for today that I have here. Hallelujah. First Peter 5, 8, 9. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. We all are going through some type of suffering. Every marriage I was at, there's always an attack because the, oh God has set it up. You're not alone. And I always, you see, when I go through stuff, there are times I just walk around the house and I confess the word and I said, let me tell you something, Satan. I am not alone. I have the whole host of heaven with me. I know they are backing me and I know God has saints, brothers and sisters praying for me. Why? Because there, many times God would bring the faces of people to me for me to pray for and I don't even know them. Husbands and wives, I don't even know their faces, but the Lord would have me interceding for them. And I tell you, I feel as I pray, as I pray, sometimes it's days I'll be praying and then I get released in my spirit that they've gotten a breakthrough. So I want to do not believe the life of the enemy. Oh, it's you alone and you going through this. Yes, we all need happiness and we can find happiness. You know, real happiness is coming, is knowing Jesus. So you could be in a marriage where there is abusive words or you're not treated right, but you could still have the joy because the joy comes from God. When you know who you are in Christ, you just look, when you hear those voices and you hear the things that that other partner may say to you, that husband or wife, you smile because you know who you are in Christ. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God, I thank you because you love me. Think about who who you are in the sight of God and you just you just you just confess those words and you laugh in the face do not let the enemy see you getting angry yes it's gonna hurt you but no know, know who you are in Christ so here it's saying be alert do not let the enemy come in a subtle way to distract you your attention from what God has for you and so in order for us not to be distracted what should we do or in order for us not to yield it says here Ephesians 6 verse 11 to 16 put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for you struggle for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms therefore Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you, you may be able to stand your ground. Hallelujah. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Everybody say that. Stand firm. Let's say that. Write that. Post that write that type that in stand firm I will stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace in addition to all this take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one of the evil one take up the shield of faith you could distinguish all the arrows of the evil one. Those arrows are going to be coming. Those arrows are going to be coming. But what is our weapon? We stand. It says stand with your belt tucked around you, the blessed spirit of righteousness. So you have the word of God. That's your word. The blessed spirit of righteousness and the righteousness of God. And you stand. You, you act the way as a child of God as the Lord said we should act. What would Jesus do in this situation? Lord, I thank you. In my flesh, I cannot do it. But I will do it in your strength. And so God wants us to stand. Take a hold of the word of God. 
worship me God is saying praise me and I'm gonna work in your situation so remember yes there is pain in our marriages things would come but in that pain we will be victorious let's say that in my pain I am victorious in my pain I am victorious in order for us to be reconciled to God there was some pain Jesus bore the pain and in order for our family to come back together we may have to turn the cheek turn the other cheek we would have to make some sacrifices remember it's not all about you am I willing the question am I willing to make the sacrifice to stand in the gap to be the mediator to be the one who would be the first to apologize ha, you know the Lord when I was in my mind when we were young in our marriages my marriage there were things that my husband said that I couldn't understand and things that he did and the Lord would always say to me Lois go apologize matter of fact I would always hear my mother's voice never let the Sun go down on your wrath never let the Sun go down on your wrath my mom always said it and then the Lord would say Lois apologize and I would say why God why do I have to apologize I didn't do anything that's wrong and then I said go and apologize and I said okay father I didn't want to do it I'm not perfect mind you but with me because at that whole time my husband you know you know we just got him with me going and apologize it turned things around because you know what when we do what God says because they, the other party may not know but they are what we're doing when when we obey God the power in our obedience would bring the transformation in that person's life and even as you may be the one not to apologize and you will say you know what whatever it is if I've offended you I'm sorry by you saying that and they know that they were wrong the Holy Spirit is gonna bring conviction and it's gonna work it may not happen overnight but do not give up the main thing is that we want to walk in obedience and just a few things I want to share before I'm before we go um, even in my spirit I heard there are some husbands and wives and there are some families where the husband may have asked the wife honey I'm making enough money I need you to be home with the children so that you know instead of them going to the babysitter instead of them being home by themselves in the evening when they come from school I just need you to be there and God said some of you some of you ladies I just heard it to my spirit you are not listening to your husband you're like listen I want to get my own money if I see a dress I want to buy I want to design a pocketbook I want to have my money I want to have my money I want to buy what I need God is saying be careful if your husband is asking you to be home with the children and you can afford it you know you can are you gonna put that material thing in the way of your attention to your children are you gonna put that material thing because or your husband or you you've been so tired you come home from the job and you stress out that all that your husband here in the nights or vice versa all that your wife here in the nights when she comes home or the husband is about the job and now it's stressful and who does what and who does what and your husband may say to you okay honey just just forget that job. I'm gonna take care of you but you still go in there you're too tired to be available to your spouse and you know what I'm talking about to be available for your spouse because you're too tired that's and you see that's the enemy it's a natural thing to be tired but you get so tired you cannot minister to your spouse vice versa husband working overtime going for those overtime pay because you want the extra money and you're not making time for your wife for your quiet times you're not taking her out on dates anymore God is saying this is how the enemy creeps in this is how the enemy creeps in so whatever we do whatever we do am I honoring God in my marriage am I taking care of my wife the way God wants me to in every area am I taking care of my husband in every area ladies some of you your husband comes home and you are on the phone he comes in from a hard day's work and you're on the phone you pay him no attention oh hi good evening and you're still on the phone with your girlfriend likewise men you do not know God said be careful you do not know the woman that was flirting in front of your husband and he had to push his way through to get home and the woman is ready to throw herself at him and here you are he's coming in the door and you pay him no attention subtle ways subtle ways hang up that phone your husband is home let him know you appreciate him likewise man your husband your wife comes in you on the phone with your boyfriend you're looking at the TV turn the TV off greet your wife you don't know what they had to push through in their job. You don't know who's coming flirting in front of them. The enemy is bringing things in the way. And then your wife or your husband may be pushing that person off. And they would be pushing themselves on them. And, as, and this is how the enemy works. Let me show you. This is how the enemy works. 
you dear having desires and your wife is not fulfilling that desires because she's either too tired or she's too busy with her girlfriends like versa you have your desires and your, 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 your husband is not doing that because he's busy on the job or whatever and they're on the job or whatever somebody the devil sends a man to your wife or the devil sends a one man a woman to your husband or vice versa a woman to your wife or a wife to your husband mm -hmm. there are many people that are um, attracted to the same sex and he would send them to them and then the enemy would say well remember she got no time for you you came in yesterday she been on the phone and you talked to her she didn't even have no food ready for you hey you know we're gonna just and she just ignore you why are you why are you wasting time with her hey you got knees my brother you got and then your friends hey bro you what you look so today what you be looking like that man my wife man she not giving me you know so what you doing about that bro you can't live like that no you got no 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 you gotta take care of business bro you gotta take care of business we listen to the voices of our friends and may not be your friends you listen to the voice of the enemy and that's how you are sweep away I didn't plan it but the person keeps pushing themselves on you and all you seeing is the last thing you saw about your spouse oh talking about what we see ladies <laughs> I gotta move on I'm gonna go but the Lord is we need to fix house ladies honey come on with your hair not in good order with a whole dress from whatever century not being very attractive and there are people out there throwing themselves at him in a job likewise man let us get our houses in order the things you did when you just got married this the stuff you were for your husband for your spouse so you know what i'm talking about i cannot see everything where did it go make yourself the way you should be attractive when that husband should not wait to come let me see what my wife has planned for me today or let me see what my husband have in mind for me today it's not only the wife man it's also you you want to what you know have that quiet time make the atmosphere lovely get some lovely nice romantic music enhance it pep it up do not let it go down and my marriage is a drag it's a dead so who made it dead have you been doing what you did when you just married this lady when you were courting her so many ways it's not only true we there are needs and we should not we should not the Bible said we should not refuse unless you come to agreement because of fasting should not refuse because there's an argument you are not getting none of mm -hmm, I'm not gonna say the rest man and woman of God subtle ways and sometimes the enemy use our own mouths our own bodies to bring that division in our family subtle ways you do not have the right to withhold because of an argument the Bible says that you do not have a right do not set yourself up do not set yourself up for the enemy to come in he's prowling remember the Bible said the enemy the verse he prowls around he's looking he's looking so if you do not meet the need of your spouse he's gonna send someone who got the, all the time in the world all the time in the world so again let's be willing to make the sacrifices an enemy is attacking our families I heard it clear in my spirit yesterday and the Lord is saying let's not be quick to run out quick to go out there let's have a divorce let's cheat let's do that no even though your the spouse may have cheated on you no you don't lower yourself I tell people don't lower yourself to that standard you don't have to do that to get back to him leave it to the Lord you pray leave it to the Lord or your wife vice versa but it doesn't have to come to that place if we are in the word mm, my I need to stop but it's going on the Lord said many of you when you started you were in the word you don't have the time for reading the word anymore you don't have the time for devotion you don't have the time to pray with your spouse and so you have gotten weak spiritually and so when you are spiritually weak that's a red line that's where the enemy prowls up and catch you on away because the word is not there to keep you standing firm the word is not there to hold you in place so God is saying my daughter is my son I have I'm a God for families my delight is wholeness you in that marriage you need to, to do what is needed to keep it going you need to spend time in my word individually have that quiet time you need to have that prayer time that praise time individually and you need together with your spouse to have that time my foundation is the word whatever is in your family whatever misunderstanding it cannot be that bad that I cannot help you it cannot be that bad that I cannot make make it work that I cannot fix it I am the God of the impossible I want it to work so before you think it's all about me I need my enjoyment I need this let's stop and think 
Jesus went to the cross. He was in no relation to me, didn't know me. He was willing to pay the price so that I could have that fellowship with God. Am I willing to pay the price so that the fellowship in my family could be restored, so that the relationship with my husband, with my wife could be restored, so that my children could be in a loving environment? Sometimes it may take some prayer and fasting. Sometimes it may take, you know, that. So, but let's get into the word. Let's confess the word. And the Lord says, praise me. I will work on your behalf. So ladies, let's take a stock of ourselves. Go through that closet. See if you need some new items. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. We don't want somebody else to be doing that. And then likewise, sit. What are the things that excited my wife? The things that I did before when I was dating her, when I wanted to, to ask her hands in the marriage? Did I forget about all those things and my life is just a drag? Let's look of ways to enhance each of our lives, your spouse's lives. Let this be a new beginning again. Do not let, do not make it easy for the enemy. He's prowling around. He's looking for that opening. Do not let that opening. Do not bring about that opening for the enemy. Jesus made the sacrifice. Am I willing to make the sacrifice for my marriage? Am I willing to make the sacrifice for my children? Remember, he wants to divide the family. He wants to get the children out there in the street. He wants to get the children into gangs. And you look, many of the children, they're out there, they're hurt from a father, they're hurt from a mother, they, they're all hurt. And as I'm saying this today, those of you waiting on God for a spouse, let's, let's, let's learn from this. Let's, let, let's be prayed up. Let's, when we, when we get married, we start off our marriages. Let's, let's remember the things that we need to enhance our marriage. They, they, you know, have this personal quiet times with the Lord, with your spouse. Um, always get yourself up beaten ready for your spouse let your spouse know that they are important don't be on the phone when you're coming home don't be on the behind the tv greet your spouse let them know you appreciate them let's pray father we thank you thank you for your word thank you for reminding us that you love us and lord i bring all marriages to you those that are going through situations father i pray that we will come to you we would not be like the world, well, it's about me. I got to be happy, so I got to get out of this because, hey, I'm not happy and I need to be happy. But let us stop and think about our children. Am I willing to make the sacrifice for my children? Help us, Lord, to come to you for help because you will help us. And I thank you because you specialize in all the impossible situations. So we bring those marriages to you today. We pray for strength. We pray for wisdom. We pray for guidance and direction. And those marriages that needs counseling, Lord, I pray that the husband would be willing to go for counseling. I pray that the wife would be willing to go for counseling. They would seek you to go to a good counselor, Father. They would not think, well, they are better than each other. Each of us has faults, but they would come together. They would come to you in prayer, asking you to help them because you specialize in the impossible. Help us, Lord, not to take the negative advice from our friends and our relatives, but to come to you because you are our strength. You know what's best for us, especially if we know we prayed and you've given us this wife and you've given us this husband. We will work on it knowing this is an attack from the enemy. Whatever is coming our way, we will work. Put on the old shield of faith. Put on the armor, the breastplate of righteousness. Stand on your word. So we give you praise and we thank you for your strength, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. And as I said, every day, what a sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus did a sacrifice. What a sacrifice. As I said, when we tempted to quit, think about what Jesus did to bring that restoration between for us and God. So we're going to sing our theme song, Miracle Working God. And there's some marriages that may need a miracle. I just want to encourage you, let you know that God specializes in the impossible and there's nothing impossible with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. doesn't stop on the weekends and neither do you so we understand that it can be hard to find the time to shop for a mattress thank this you. is right thank you jesus hallelujah ah oh, the devil is alive play this morning thank you father mm -hmm. oh magnify the lord with me and let, let us exalt, exalt his name together, together. hallelujah i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears if god has delivered you today i want you to join me as we worship the lord in the Whatever is going on in your family life, in your 
marriage, nothing is difficult. Do not give the devil the glory. Do not give him the upper hand. And those of you, your spouse may have left, and you know the Lord promised you that that was the man or that was the wife, do not give up. We're going to be praying with you that the Lord will bring that man or that woman back. God is a restore. Yes, So, Father, we thank you. And as you go forth today, brothers and sisters, look around your home. Spend that quiet time. God, are there things in my marriage that I'm just pushing under the rug? I'm not communicating. I'm not talking. Hoping that someday it's going to change. Bring it to the Lord. It's not going to change. Because the more we push things our way and we don't, we don't come to the place where we communicate, it's not going to change. It's going to get worse. So, if you have a spouse that doesn't want to talk, you go to God. God, this is going on and we need to talk about this. We need to get this taken care of. I'm asking for your intervention. But do not suffer in silence doing nothing. The most you could do is pray. Go to God. He's going to work it out. The Lord may send someone that spouse's way to give them a word, to, to encourage them. But do not sit and wait. Go to God. God is your miracle worker. He's going to work it through. So the question, what am I willing to do to bring about that change in my life? intentional change thank you thank you michelle we have to be intentional i want a change to come about so i have to intentionally am i going to bring about that change i'm going to get into the word i'm going to confess that word over my marriage my husband has the mind of christ my husband would treat me the way christ said he would treat the church my wife is loving and she would love me the way the word said god said that she should love so we both each party confess the word of god intentional every day you confess it you pray over your family you pray with your wife and your husband and if they don't want to pray with you 
you pray separately, but you believe the Lord, but you confess the word over intentional change. I want to see it happen. I'm not just sitting down. And we're not going to cry and beg God. No, God has already given it to the Lord. I receive the power you have given me. I receive the wisdom that you've given me to take care of this situation. Lord, let me say the right words. Let me do the right thing at the right time. Receive it. God is there. Go to God. He wants to help you. Again, God specializes in the impossible and he wants our marriages to work. Thank you for joining us. I hope this was a blessing to you. Am I willing to do what it takes? Am I willing to make the sacrifice? Jesus made a sacrifice. It was painful. Yes, it would be painful, but joy comes in the morning. And we can be joyful in that pain knowing God is taking care of it. Thank you all. Be blessed. Love on your spouses. Love on your children. Have a great weekend. Do something exciting. Man, husband, husband, wife, do something exciting. Surprise your husband. Surprise your wife. Something exciting to spark that marriage. Love you guys. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. It's a holiday weekend. Have fun. God is good. Take care. Bye. See you on Monday at 6.30 a.m. Thank you.